Hello everyone. Today is Saturday. What's the official date? Saturday, January 28th, about 1.30ish. I'm in Ahmednagar, India. This is, uh, well, basically Meherabad is the home area or village or town that has grown up around Avatar Meher Baba. You can see his picture here. He's uh, basically the, you know, the avatar of the age. And uh, yeah, we're just here for this event called Amartiti. And uh, it hasn't been able to be celebrated for the last few years because of the pandemic. So they're expecting about 30,000 different pilgrims. I'm here amongst this orchard of chiku fruit, which is a unbelievably awesome fruit that you'll never get in America. And this is some beautiful farmland growing some wheat right here. Yeah, we're really in the real India now. I'm so blessed just to have been able to go on this trip with my, my good friend Daniel, who is basically like more Indian than most Indians, more Hindu. He speaks fluent Hindi, so everywhere he goes, he just, you know, Indians just love him and just are so impressed with him. And he just got married and I'm just so happy for him. And that's uh, just so so wonderful because he's so deeply tied to this Meher Baba world, you know? And it's just, it's such a family, like such a community of devotees of God, you know? Um, <clears throat> many of you have probably not heard of Avatar Meher Baba, so I should say a few words about that. Um, you probably have heard of uh, Sai Baba or Shirdi Sai Baba. He was a very legendary saint, like almost everyone knows about him in India. Um, Sh Shirdi Sai Baba famously gave his power to Meher Baba. Like, Shirdi Sai Baba was considered to be one of the five perfect masters of his time. And uh, it's and he famously, when Meher Baba first approached him as a young man, Shirdi Sai Baba was sitting with those and he just yelled out, Parvati Gar, Parvati Gar, which means that the avatar, like Lord Vishnu incarnate in, in human flesh. And yeah, so it's, yeah, it's, uh, it's an interesting thing. Like Meher Baba is uh, the real legit underground spirituality of India. Not like he's the only one, there's lots of stuff like that, but he's not the kind of guy you're gonna hear about on YouTube when you type it in and all this, you know, Sadhguru and all this stuff shows up, you know? Um, yeah, so he, there, uh, the famous legend is that he, you know, he was, as a young boy, he would visit this um, this old woman who was believed to be like 150 or 200 years old. She was believed to be like a witch or a sorcerer. Her name was Hazrat Babajan. And he would hang out with her a long time. And then one time, one time she kissed him on the forehead. And it supposedly, it, in his own words, brought him up to the fourth plane of consciousness, to the heart. And he lost all consciousness of his body and mind and everything and for two years he just did everything on autopilot not sleeping not eating not drinking his family were as wealthy as Zoroastrians they had the best doctors and people come and check him out and no one could understand why he was unable to sleep or speak but what was but in his own words what he was what was happening is he was lifted up to the higher planes and he was trying to bring himself back down and he couldn't and he actually would bash his head against a wall over and over and over and over just like boom 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 just to try to get his consciousness back down to the earth and so then he actually had to visit four other masters to help bring him back down and that's the thing is that then we all learn that this used to be ancient knowledge but it's kind of lost now but there's always according to him there's always five perfect masters on the planet at all times and there's a slew of others who are ready to take the place if one of them drops the body. But the five perfect masters that he had to visit, these guys are so amazing. And this woman, Hazrat Babajan, she was the first he met. She was a woman. You have to learn about Hazrat Babajan. If you want to know about women in the spirituality world, you need to learn about her. After her, he visited Upasni Maharaj, this powerful sadhu, who basically considered the king of yogis super fiery he visited Narayan Maharaj this other profound yogi who you have to learn about Tajuddin Baba he visited him and uh, Sai Baba so those were the five perfect masters of his age they're no longer alive but 
there are five other perfect masters out there. I don't know exactly who they are, but they're out there. They're always around. But this land where I'm in, Maharashtra, and particularly Ahmednagar, is so steeped with the legends of the five perfect masters and Meher Baba that, I mean, I just get goosebumps just thinking about them. And I'm just learning the most amazing stories about them. And it's just, un it's unbelievable. It's so profound. So I know that I have an astrology channel. I know that I'm a Vedic astrologer, but y'all know that I'm also a Kriya Yogi. And, you know, really it's, I'm a spiritual being, you know, not more so than just an astrologer. And I'm a spiritual astrologer. And so I just want to encourage you guys to maybe do a little bit of learning about him. A lot of the stuff Meher Baba said or did might seem kind of crazy to some, but for some of you out there, I think you might be ripe to learn about him. I think it might be time. He's basically been the, the you know, this unbelievable guiding force in my life. And the only reason my life's good, I would have to say is because of him. And you'll feel his grace if you tap into him. Let's just say that because he is Lord Vishnu. Don't wait a hundred years until they make a religion out of it. Imagine the time of Christ living 30 or 50 years. We're 50 years after Christ died, but basically with Mary Baba. And so if you imagine 50 years after Christ died, he was not well known. Most people wouldn't believe you if you told him the stories about him. And that's the way it is with Meher Baba or Muhammad or all these people. And in fact, there's actually a lot of funny, it's actually, Baba talked about this. There's a lot of evidence that the avatar is always hated by the world and only loved by a select few, by like the souls that are really ripe for it. But actually they're usually mocked and hated by the world. And it's crazy because we have so much evidence of that. Rama was exiled, by, you know what I mean? He was definitely hated by many people and got exiled. Krishna, you know, he was, they tried to kill him all over and over and over again. The, that evil King Kamsa, I believe, right? And then uh, Christ, you know, Christ was, is definitely docu well documented that he was hated and the Pharisees eventually hanged him. And even Muhammad, there's a lot of documentation about, you know, a lot of people didn't like him. And that's just supposedly part of the mystery of the Avatar's work. But yeah, so I really just, uh, yeah, I'll try to keep this video short. But yeah, you guys check out Meher Baba. You could watch this documentary about God Speaks on YouTube. And that is also a really, really amazing documentary. Um, and uh, yeah, if you're more curious about the idea of the Avatars in the more traditional Hindu, like Orthodox sense, read the book, The Srimad Bhagavatam. That's a really, really wonderful book. But, but this, you just have to understand that this is all like just recently happened. And so it's so much more special and so much more powerful. You go to Meher Baba Samadhi, like you, I, just, I just rode here with a guy who like grew up with the Mandali and the followers of Meher Baba and was a baby and was kissed by Meher, Meher Baba's uh, wife and consort. It's just profound how this is, they're really living, this is living enlightenment, living spirituality, and it's all about just love for God and longing for God. And at the end of the day, that's really all Hinduism and Vedanta and everything is about. You know, if you can't do that, you can do intellectual stuff. And you know, y'all know me, I'm all about the intellect and yoga and everything and pranayam. There's other paths, you know, there's Raja Yoga, Karma Yoga, Dhyana Yoga, but the core of all of Indian spirituality is about learning to love God, not just to love God, learning to long for God. And this is, everyone here has that and they're living it. And so I just feel so grateful to be here. I'm so happy to be home. If you ever get the chance to go to Meherabad, visit Meherbaba's Samadhi and just see what happens. Leave it at that. Jay Baba.